Well, fall is in the air and it is getting on towards cold weather season. So it's time for me living here in the Rocky Mountains to dive into my tubs of clothing and start swapping out my warm weather gear for my cold weather gear. Because here at the channel and just in my life, do a lot of stuff year round, regardless of the temperatures. We'll go snowshoeing in the winter and still doing hiking and you know gear testing, and all the different things that we do here. Uh, and then the summertime, you know, we're doing the exact same thing. So the weather, in the sense of snow and temperatures, isn't a factor in you know like buttoning up for the win winter. So uh, in this video, I just want to show you guys a few of the items that I'm busting out that I'm planning on using all winter long. <laughs> I love this time of year, just the seasons changing the colors, you know, um, going and then, you know, the snows come and that also is just a, a fun time for me. I enjoy actually hiking and doing outdoor activities in the winter time because a lot of people don't go out. So you're less likely to, you know, encounter people, but just the environment is so different. So I love that. So, um, guys, all the gear that I'm about to show you is, is these clothing items. Mostly, um, are items that I have used at least one season fully, like all of winter, um, like 2019 to 2020, uh, winter. And now we're going into the fall of 2020. Um, and many of them I've had for over five years, just depending on the gear item that I'm about to share with you. So I'll just break them down real quick for you, show you why I'm using, why they connect with me and the reliability that they have for me as somebody who's out there adventuring all the time in all sorts of different cold weather environments. Now we might as well start with one of the most used items here at the channel that I wear almost year round, just because of the fluctuations of temperatures depending on altitude, but I definitely use year round in the cold season as well, is this Outdoor Research Ferrasi hoodie. Guys, I love this hoodie. It's been with me for years. It's tough, it's durable, it holds up so well, it's water resistant, um, it blocks wind well, it's extremely breathable, which what I found is very important, particularly when you are hiking in cold weather. It's cold, but when you're exerting yourself, you start, tend to heat up and you hate taking your pack off and then stripping down and putting layers back on and off. This allows me to put on a base layer and then usually, unless it really starts to go below, I I'd say 30 degrees, then I'm set. I'm good with this hoodie right here. And it functions so well. But then in the summertime as well, it's a great water resistant shell to work in so many different environments. It's so flexible, so mobile. And I love this piece of gear. Then last year, Outdoor Research dropped their heavier weight version. The Ferrasi Grid Hoodie. So this is a slightly heavier weight. It has a fleece liner in most of the portions of it, but still giving you some breathability down the sides so that when it drops below 30, I'm good to throw this on with a base layer and I can join myself and feel very comfortable all the way down into the low 20s. If you hear a little yipping and yelping, we got Tommy the trail dog behind the camera here seeing some squirrels and wanting to go chase them. So I apologize if you're hearing some of that. But guys, this is a great kind of next level if you're looking for that, but still giving you that flexibility and durability and water resistant, wind resistant, all that stuff, but giving you a little bit more warmth than the original Ferrasi hoodie can offer to you. Now I have access to all kinds of cold weather gear for my boots. You know, I have lots of options out there. I've tested out several different brands over the years. But right now, what really is connecting with me, we used it last year and I went on so many treks and it just really fit for me what I'm looking for out of my boots. You know, your feet, they got to stay warm. And for me, particularly if, if we're hiking in somewhere and then we're going to set up camp for the day and do gear testing or, you know, just do woods craft and have a good time, whatever it is, your feet may be warm while you're hiking, but then when you're you know, standing around, it's 25, 28 degrees, you, you know, they got to be warm. You, you got to still stay warm and not start to get really, really cold unless you're like right up against the fire. And so what I found is that these Keens, these insulated guys here really work well. I like them because they have a, a generous toe box and that's really nice kind of toe cap that a lot of other boots don't offer to you. So I can get my socks, uh, really good thick wool socks on. It's not gonna cut down on the size. I'm, they're true to size, I wear size 11 on everything. And, and I seem to have a little bit more room. And it also just helps with your toes so they're not like cramped and you know cutting off blood circulation, which is something that's very important in cold weather. It has a good little you know like attachment here for your gaiters that we'll talk about in just a second. 
rides high, really good water resistance. Um, they're waterproof. I haven't seen any soaking, you know, or anything through them and my socks getting wet, you know. Um, they have uh, 200 grams of insulation right there. This is rated for negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know about that. Uh, you know, I've been in really cold weather in high teens and it works okay. Uh, I wouldn't want to go below zero with these boots. I would definitely be going with something bigger than that and more insulated. So you do have the, um, again, insulation in there. They have an insulated sole. Uh, and then also you get really good traction because that's another aspect. You know, if you're going around and you don't have good lugs on the sole of your boot, you're going to slip, you're going to slide, you know, those type of things. So this gives me really good traction and grip as well when I'm on the trail in icy or slick or snowy conditions. And the leather not only looks good, but it's also very tough, you know, cause I'm going through brush and, you know, um, using tools and those type of things that, uh, you know, you're seeing wear, but it holds up very well versus something that's maybe a synthetic. Well, how about your little handsies? You gotta keep those warm and mobile and full dexterity when you are in cold weather conditions. Now, um, if you are on a really tight budget if you get fleece lined like leather ranch gloves, you can go to any like ranch store. I have a pair from like Big R. Um, those work very well for, you know, like 30 bucks usually. The one downfall is every single one that I've found just doesn't have a ton of dexterity. So I was looking for something with more dexterity and because I'm out here so much and I'm, you know, doing stuff year round, I, I was willing to um, up the ante in the price point. So that is something that you have to consider. You know, if you're doing this, you know, every once in a while, not a big deal if you're not out in cold weather environments and you know a, a ranch store with a fleece line leather glove might be the way to go but for me what i've found so far with all of my testing the highest level of dexterity i've been able to find is from these smart wool gloves um, what they have are 100 um, goat leather so flexible so much dexterity i mean it is like bananas and then you have um 70 percent wool 30 percent nylon backers right here and then the insulation is the same as well you get a little collar right there you know just to kind of help mitigate some of you know gunk getting in there and then you have a little clip that you can snap them together but the dexterity is insane for these gloves and it does give me really good insulation down to a point what i've found is when i start getting into the low 20s that's when i can start to feel the the cold start getting into the gloves and i think that's because of the wool backers here so i'm still on the hunt for like the ultimate dexterity but giving me even like better warmth some of it may just be you know you got to sacrifice dexterity for warmth at some point into when you start getting into the 20s um, but when i'm in the 30s and even high 20s it's totally good and i can rock these all day long and i my hands are nice and warm obviously you can do liners if you want these are also true to size i usually get large size gloves these fit perfect and i could get thin liners in here and still have a lot of dexterity if it really got cold and this is what i was using but so far for dexterity to warmth to durability with the leather um, because of all the gunk and tools and things that I'm doing, I don't want just synthetic and working with fire a lot and stuff in the wintertime. Um, these have just been rock solid. So I do want to take a brief time out here just to remind you about the hyperlinks that we're going to offer to you in the description box below. So if one of these gear items does connect with you, you can just click that link, take you right over, give you some different options that you can take a look at. And we appreciate it here at the channel when you do that and use those hyperlinks if there is a gear item that does connect with you. But I also wanna invite you to subscribe if you're not yet subscribed to the channel. We have an awesome community of people here uh, and it's just great, feels like family. Every single time I post a video like this uh, and when I'm making content, I I'm, I'm literally feel like I'm speaking to friends of mine, you know, um, and that's just so cool. So we invite you to subscribe. Um, and just become part of the GT family here. You can check us out on Instagram and Facebook as well. All those uh, social media, you know, environments we're on and platforms we're on, and you can, you know, follow along there and see what's up and coming, projects I'm working on as well. So how about extra traction? What happens when you hit like ice, you know, and you're going over maybe some heavy duty rocks that you gotta try and climb up or good over? And, you know, yeah, those lugs that are on your boots are good for the snow and some slick conditions, but it, this is next level stuff. Well, I decided to go a few years ago with the Catula Micro Spikes. Now these things are basically like actual chains for your shoes. Think of chains for your cars, chains for your shoes. Uh, these things have about an inch spike on them. Uh, they are very easy to put on, only takes a minute, uh, and goes right over your shoe. And these things are epic. I can get over just about anything with ice and snow when I got my 
uh, micro spikes on. Now there are a lot of other options. You can get uh, like yak tracks, which have little spikes and little studs, which are good for more uh, flat environments with just a little bit of ice. Um, but when you start going over like a lot of rock and or there's compact snow as well, what I've found is those can sometimes get compacted with snow and then you don't get the grip that you need. These, because of the way that they're designed with the chains and with the teeth, that they really get through some of that snow and still grab onto the environment, which is a really good thing. The downside is because of the inch almost that you're getting on those teeth there, uh, if you are walking in between like really hard ground, so again, maybe if you're in at home, you know, and you're walking on a sidewalk a mile, um, the, the things like yak tracks that have the smaller spikes are better because they're just um, not as hard on your feet. This you'll, You will feel it if you're walking on not snow and not ice. So that's just something to keep in consideration. But these things are epic and like just take the if you will rock crawling you know capability of your trek and your adventure to the next level with these style of spikes now for me gaiters are a necessity to throw over your shoe to give you that good water resistance and you know um, deflection of the snow and just environment uh, when you're out there in possibly you know two feet three feet you know snow drifts but also even if it's just six inches you know and you're trekking and even the trail is somewhat compact if you're throwing up snow all the time and having to go through heavy brush and that type of stuff it's going to get inside your shoe and then it's going to start melting and then you're going to have cold feet and it doesn't matter how warm your boots are if you get snow down in there it's a you know non-starter and so the outdoor research um, gators here that I have have I've used now for I think five years four to five years and I love them uh, what I love about them is one they're just durability and I haven't had any issues with them any failures whatsoever they have a nice you know synthetic um, strap to go over your foot that's fully adjustable they have the hook that again works in tandem with the shoes those keens that I have um, to keep them from sliding up and then that full velcro so that you can take it on and off and that velcro is so thick that you don't have any leakage or seepage and then it also has the collar uh, tightener so that in the course of let's say a six mile hike what i found is i might have to readjust this collar one time which is pretty impressive for gators a lot of them just have like drawstring shock cords different things like that and they can tend to just slide down and then they just become this crumpled mess down near your ankles so these work so well they go over that calf muscle just below the kneecap so that I have almost not even a need to have waterproof pants particularly if I'm having to go through snow I mean it's a benefit but you can almost get away with out doing that and many times I do depending on the environment I'm going into knowing that I have these very large good gaiters to deflect the snow and moisture and keep my lower legs as well as my boots uh, nice and dry well folks that's my list so far obviously we'll be testing cold weather gear you know all winter long and stuff like that and maybe some things will be discovered but i went to my totes busted out this equipment and i'm stoked and there's really no need to upgrade you know i'm always testing and reviewing that's part of what we do here as a gear channel um, and seeing what else is out there but i believe that these items will give you a fantastic jump into enjoying cold weather outdoor adventures that you can go snowshoeing you can even do you know certain types of um you know cross-country skiing and different things like that you can go backpacking overnight if you wanted to and you have you know a hot tent or something like that or just working you know you have to do cold weather work you work outdoors you know you gotta um, take care of property whatever it may be i think that the items that i've shared with you today i have found phenomenal success with over the years and that i love and i would recommend to any friend or family member that I have in my life. And so I'm recommending it to you, the GT family. So guys, I look forward to hearing your comments though on what your experience has been, not only with the equipment that I've shared with you, but maybe what are some cold weather items that you found are absolutely vital to your outdoor routine in the winter months when you are, Tommy the trail dog, going after squirrels, man. Um, when you guys are in the cold weather and in snowy environments and what do you use? And if there are cold weather items you'd like me to test out this year as we come up on 2020 to 2021 winter season, um, are there things that you would like me to see tested that I might be able to get my hands on to test out for you guys, the viewers? So again, thank you guys so much. Thank you for watching another video popping up. And again, subscribing if you're not yet a subscriber. You guys are amazing. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, stay warm, and we'll see you out there.